Hi, everybody. This is also a little bit different. Um, it'll come back around um, to um, community design. But uh, before I get there, I want to take you on a path, a journey of the project that Elizabeth and I are working on, the Land Art Generator Initiative. Through a little, starting with a little history lesson, um, renewable uh, distributed energy resources and um, integrated energy is not new. If you go back to the beginning of electrification, all of our power plants are located in the hearts of our cities. We couldn't raise the voltage high enough to transmit over long distances. So these were designed as beautiful works of architecture because we all lived next to them. Sure, they belched out terrible um, exhaust, but uh, we had no other choice until we were able to raise the voltage and transmit over long distances, and we um, moved our power plants out of our cities. And in that um, change, they lost their relationship to art and to architecture. They're no longer designed as beautiful works of art. Um, most people have no idea where their energy comes from. There's no human and cultural relationship to energy production with these large centralized facilities. Um, and that relationship to art and architecture and the disconnection from it is continuing in some cases in the renewable energy infrastructure sphere for these large scale installations in our landscapes which are able to give a cause or an art ulterior motive to some people who are objectionable to the proliferation of these infrastructures. So how do we make renewable energy sexy? How do we make it something that people want to have? How do we make it something that is is not a, a need to have or an unfortunate result of, of being sustainable. Um, and how do we recognize that the impact on our land use is going to be significant when we reach 100% renewable energy? This is a graphic that shows the surface area of the earth required to power the world of all forms of energy with solar. And it doesn't look like a lot when it's spread out there, but if you put it all together, it's about the size of Spain, so it's a pretty big deal. So right now, at 2% of solar, we're not really hitting up against that land use issue, but you're already seeing the not in my backyard. And how do we integrate these infrastructures into our cities in creative ways? And what is the city of the future that's a renewable look like? You know, we're already doing this in architecture where the idea of integrating renewable energy resources and on-site energy is starting to inform the way that our buildings are looking and living buildings can expand into living cities. And we're looking at a type of sustainable expressionism where these natural energies on site are actually contributing to the form generation of our, of our buildings. And that is going to happen with the form generation and the urban design of our cities. Because in between these buildings, because buildings can only do so much, much there's a lot to ask of a building with this program. To be 100% is a lot. To be more than 100% is really difficult. So we need to use our parks, our public spaces, our riverfronts, all the spaces in between buildings to, um, to take advantage of those spaces. But you can't just throw up a wind turbine or some solar panels behind a chain link fence because you're doing an injustice to the movement. You're not going to get it, people inspired about what these things look like. So, in 2008, Elizabeth and I were in Dubai, and we were at Ski Apre and a bottle of wine, and we were looking at um, what grant we were going to apply for and how to unite um, her background in art and mine in architecture and something that we could do together in our spare time. And it's grown to be our full time. But the idea was that we would open up to the entire world the idea of, of designing these energy infrastructures as intentional works of art in our landscapes for certain places where you can't just do a conventional approach. And we have our latest competition open right now. It's 2018 for Melbourne, so check that out at landartgenerator.org. And I'm just going to show you a few of the examples really quickly here. Here you have conventional solar panels. You give them to an artist and they turn into energy duck. So everybody loves a duck, right? And kids love this. They say, that's genius. And, and so um, obviously, this is um, not the cheapest kilowatt hour, but it's public art. And it pays for itself, um, which is not all public art does. But you don't have to limit it to the blue solar panels. You can do um, gold tinted. You can do laminations. You can create a new photovoltaic sphere for the city of Abu Dhabi. You can use organic thin films to create beautiful, sinuous, um, colorful land artworks that are power plants where you'd want to go and have a picnic. You can use solar thermal energy. This is a beam down tower. These central uh, solar power towers are kind of unintentional works of land art, but what if they become more intentional? And the winner of the 2014 competition is a solar hourglass 
to remind us all that there's still time to avert the worst effects of climate change. It's a positive and inspiring message. We can give some things, people something to run towards rather than run away from. And the message of rising sea levels and um, heat map projections can be sometimes a little bit depressing. It's important and true, but depressing. So um, here's some wind energy examples, concentrated wind. The engineers know that this doesn't work in the market, but if you put it into a public artwork, then it really has uh, an interesting resonance. Here's fresh hills, beautiful landforms. Um, Wind Nest in Pittsburgh does the same thing. Here's a prototype at a quarter scale that we're testing. We're building this right now. Um, so these things are starting to happen in the world. Um, really interesting new technologies. We put out a field guide, 60 different ways you can create electricity from nature cleanly. And that comes together in wind stock here. We've got wave energy generating devices as public art for the Santa Monica Pier. Like, all sorts of technology can come together to make our cities more beautiful and more sustainable. And we're working with kids in summer camps to give them lessons in energy science and art, and then they build their own artworks, which are 5KW solar power plants that power their community centers. And the neighborhood will respect this artwork. If it's behind a chain link fence, it's not gonna be maintained as well, or parts will go missing, but no one's gonna touch this. It was made by the kids. And we work with um, rural communities all around the world. This is Alorga Saley, Kenya, where these women are designing what energy looks like for them. How can it be culturally relevant and aesthetically relevant to who they are and how it can be an expression of, of their culture at the same time as it's helping to power their world. And we think that that kind of engagement of community in the process of, of concept design and implementation can be very powerful and have long lasting um, benefits. We put out a lot of educational materials. We're always looking for ways to look at new technologies and how they align with art movements to really get people inspired about what's possible. We engage kids in projects where they can imagine their own renewable energy landscapes and the power of public art is demonstrated in its economic benefits. So let's have these new monuments to the future to celebrate this great energy transition. And a shout out to Mike Pascaletti from ASU on our board. And uh, thanks, everybody. Thank you.